Hey everyone, so today I'm going to introduce to you my final project topic which was Comparison of Techniques, a previous layer creation at Carrollton VA. And the question is I'm going to answer why this study area, what are limitations of both performing a supervised classification and then creating a more detailed and previous layer, and then what to do when data becomes misclassified. So the data I used was a 2014 NAIP GeoTIFF, which I got from USGS's Earth Explorer website. And this is part of the National Agriculture Imagery Program, and is raster data that has four bands and is unsigned 8-bit. The data I referenced to help perform my classifications was Google Maps, Google Earth, and Bing Maps. And this allowed me to see what was in that area using street views. So the methods and techniques used in this project was spatial enhancements to create a crisp and texture image, supervised classification to classify my land types, and then unsupervised classification, but combining that with masking, recoding, digitizing, extraction by mask, and arc map to help troubleshoot wrongly classified data, such as wetlands being classified as impervious. So this is my flowchart, and as you can see, it's pretty detailed, but it covers everything from gathering the data to performing spatial enhancements, and then the supervised classification itself with the land types. And then from there, I created my unsupervised classification on the CRISP image. And then just like in the additional classification techniques lab, I used masking, recoding, and NDVI creation to mask out one layer at a time. But when I did this, I was left with wetlands being classified as impervious like I showed in the previous slide. And then so what I did was I transferred that output to ArcMap and then I digitized wetlands and water areas. And then um, once those shape files were created, I used an erase tool and extracted wrongly classified stuff. And then just for fun, I use recoding techniques and arc map just to display the impervious layer and get rid of zeros. So my results are shown here. At the top is spatial enhancements. And after running the crisp image, um, you can see the image got brighter and it made things easier to see. And then the texture was useful in identifying where land change occurs or land types change. So I use my CRISP image to create my supervised classification with these following classes. And this area right here zoomed into the James River Bridge, which is my main focused area. Moving on, so the output to the detailed and pervious layer is right here. And then I overlaid that on top of the imagery to make sure everything lined up and everything was good, and it was. And one thing I noticed when comparing them side by side, the supervised classification to the detailed and previous layer creation, is both had issues in this area right here classifying land. And this is because, like at the crisp image, you can see, and in this error image right here, that there's a black little smudge, and that could be a cloud shadow or just something on the lens itself, but it caused land, it caused the land to be wrongly classified. Then also up here, um, the supervised classification method uh, coded some of these areas as impervious, even though there weren't. And this, I'm talking about the water here, not the bridge. Uh, moving on, so in the end, I came up with these summaries. Supervised classification was the fastest and gave it a good idea where impervious areas were located, but it wasn't the most accurate. And then performing a more detailed impervious layer creation proved to be more accurate but it was very time consuming. I believe it took about 12 hours um, and part of it was figuring out how I was going to mask out those wetlands. And in the end neither was 100% accurate but it did, give a good, it did give me a good idea what the limitations were of each and then how to troubleshoot things. And I hope to apply this to future work in examining this area going back in time to see how land has changed over time. Anyway, hopefully this answers a lot of your questions and good luck on your projects.